I said community hospital pharmacist instead of community to hospital pharmacist. Okay, let's try again. Okay. Hi and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to talk about what I get a lot of messages about and that is basically how to go from being a community pharmacist to a hospital pharmacist. Now I did my pre-reg in both community and hospital and I've also asked a lot of people like how they did it. For instance, one of my really close friends and colleagues, Fazana, she did it. And also I got advice from a senior pharmacist as well who worked for a long time in community, then now is a senior pharmacist in hospital. So the question is, how do you make that transition? How do you adjust to that transition? And I think what I get a lot of messages about is that people struggle. So they either struggle to get interview in the first place or they struggle during the interview. And basically I just wanna give advice about that. So first I'm gonna talk about my own advice to you and then I'm gonna talk about what the senior pharmacist has kindly told me to pass on to you guys. And she is an interviewer as well. So she knows exactly what you know the hospital pharmacists are looking for when they recruit. So before we go on, the first point that I wanna say is don't be disheartened. So I know that a lot of you during Oriel might have been rejected from hospital or you're in community now, like fully qualified and you wanna make that transition, but you're not getting interviews or you're getting rejected after interviews. Just basically do not get disheartened. I was also in the same place. I didn't know whether any hospital would accept me. I was quite unsure. I think one of the first interviews I ever had was in Brighton. At that point, I'd done six months of pre-reg and I'd only done community. So all of the examples that I gave during interview and whatever was community-based. And they rejected me saying that I didn't have enough hospital experience. I was very disheartened by that because I was like, well, if you don't give me a chance to work in hospital, how am I supposed to get experience and then talk about it in an interview? I got through that, I got through that rejection and now I am working in one of my favorite hospitals in London. So I just wanna say, do not give up, keep at it. You can't get disheartened and that is the first step. My next piece of advice is act now. So once you realize, I feel like I'm in the wrong field, I'm in community, but I wanna go into hospital, start making the steps now. Fazana, one of my colleagues, she said she was happy that she came straight from community after pre-reg and went straight into hospital. And she was really happy about that because she still had her pre-reg knowledge in her head. For me, I had a year of mental health hospital experience before I moved to an acute trust. So I feel like I was quite brain dead and I wish that I had gone straight to an acute hospital immediately after pre-reg and then stayed on, but I didn't. So the point is, as soon as you realize that you're in the wrong place, act now and there's no sooner time than right now. Okay, so our next piece of advice is Go for a step up hospital. So a lot of hospitals, some of them are specialists. For example, mental health hospitals are desperate to have band sixes because a lot of people don't want to specialize right now. There's a lot of jobs in specialist hospitals, for example, the eye hospital or mental health hospital. And I think it's easier to get into those than it is to go straight for an acute trust if you're coming from community. So think about what your nearest step up hospital might be and get into that hospital first, and then go from that hospital and then step up. If you choose a specialist hospital, then you can at least say in interview for an acute hospital, you can say, look, I am in mental health or I'm in like an eye, like Moorfields Eye Hospital. So I do have hospital experience, but I want a broader range of knowledge. And that's why I wanna to move to a general acute hospital. So yeah, I would say think of what your step up hospitals are and make use of those. Next is if you have the luxury and you're living with family and you don't need to think about rent and stuff and you're, you don't need like a stable income right now, then consider the bank or locum route. So again, a lot of hospitals are constantly looking for bank pharmacists or locum pharmacists, right? So use that route um, to get in, like register with an agency. I think I did a video on like life as a locum pharmacist, which you can see. Um, we have seen that video. <laughs> yeah, which you can see in the, I'll put in the link below. Even that is experience. So that is gonna give you more of a chance of getting into hospital permanently if you have that experience. Okay, now, if you either didn't get an interview or after interview you were, you were rejected, look at your application and also ask for feedback. So just have a look at your written application and share it with your hospital pharmacist friends, even send it to me and just say, look, how do you think I can improve this? Are all your examples from community? If they are, then they're not gonna read it and be like, this person's suited for hospital, right? You can change your words to make 
your skill set in community suited for hospital, but you need to make that clear in your application. So yeah, work on your written application, share it, ask people for feedback. Then if you're rejected after interview, always, 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 always ask for feedback. Call them, make sure they remember you. Say, oh, I really, really, really wanna know where I can improve. I'm so desperate to get into hospital, but I really need your help. And please, can you take some time? If they're not answering the phone, then email them. Try and email your interviewers. Obviously don't bombard them and make them really annoyed. <laughs> but make sure that they remember you. Then next time, if you're able to apply again, then they'll be like, oh, this person wasn't ready at the time of interview, but now they are. And they're much more likely to give you the job if that's the case. Never give up, guys. <laughs> During interview, acknowledge where your shortfalls are. So say, listen, I know that, you know, it might seem to you that I've only got experience in community, but this is how these skills are gonna transfer over to hospital. Make sure that you are able to explain properly how those specific skills in community will help you in hospital. If you're just giving community examples, which is what I did for my Brighton interview, that's not gonna help anything. Just say, yes, okay, I acknowledge that this example is from community and whatever, but in hospital, this is how I would use it. I also think that if you mention your where you lack, they will think that, oh, that person knows how to improve. Exactly. So that's exactly. going to make an impression on Exactly. The I completely agree with you. Obviously, don't start, like, you know, selling yourself short and yeah. talking about all of the bad Obviously. points. Though. But... I completely agree. I think mention some. exactly saying, okay, I don't have experience in this particular field, but this is how I go about getting it. This is how I would improve on things that I lack on. Okay. Now for the interview as well, study clinically. So I went to one of my interviews and I just completely ignored renal function. Like that's such a crucial part. I went, I screened the whole chart and then I went to them and I was like, this is what's wrong, blah, blah, blah. And then they were like, did you even look at the renal function? And I was like, oh, uh, no, and I actually got the job, but I'm just saying, <laughs> you're like, how? But I'm just saying, right? Like, you are going for a clinical job, so make sure your clinical knowledge is on point, regardless of whether you're coming from community or not. And lastly, what I wanna say is finding a job is a job in itself. It's not just gonna come to you. You need to decide that, okay, this is a job, I'm working on getting a job and I'm going out there. Be on NHS jobs. Ask people, go on track jobs, speak to all of your friends at university and say, please let me know if there's a job for band six is coming around or whatever. And yeah, just use your social circles to help you in that way. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk about the points that an actual interviewer gave me. So this interviewer is a senior pharmacist at my trust. She worked for years in community and now she's like a really high, in a high position in hospital. Oh wow. Yeah, and I said to her, I'm doing a video, can you please give me some points? So the points that she's given me of how to get into hospital pharmacy are volunteer in a hospital properly, so you get exposure to the work involved, clinical screening of charts, prioritisation of work on the wards, um, TTAs with supplies of critical meds, screening, and so on. This means get ward cover for a few weeks to get the full picture, not a few days here and there. So for this, I just want to say, if you can't get any sort of work experience in a hospital, right, turn up. You know, show your face. That's what I used to do. I literally would turn up and be like, this was in the north rather than the south, so I'm not sure how London would take that. But in the north of England, I was like, yo, um, I really need to have like, work experience. Please, 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 please. Once they saw me, they were like, okay, we can give you a day. Once they gave me a day, they were like, okay, we'll give you a month. So really just try and get as much experience as you can, whether that's work experience or whether it's through some sort of placement or whether it is through banking or locoming. She's also said sell your skills. So community pharmacists are so much better at working on their own and dealing with queries on their own and managing stress. And so talk about how you're gonna use those skills in hospital. In community, you literally are alone. You're the top of the ladder, as in no, nothing goes out without you approving it. As a community pharmacist, you do have the skill set of managing a pharmacy, managing the team, making really big decisions at the top of the chain there. And so think about how you can sell those skills during the interview. She's also said, do clinical pharmacy CPPE packs to increase your clinical knowledge. Most interviews will focus on clinical screening of charts, and this is where most fall short. Yes, you must continue improving your knowledge, even if you're working in community. Do all of, I mean, I know CPP is really annoying and no one actually wants to do studying, especially after like a long shift at work. But if you want to not fall short in interview, you need to upkeep that knowledge and CPP is unfortunately one of the pretty much, not only, but main ways to do that as a community pharmacist. So yeah, 
Be aware of current issues affecting the NHS, especially hospitals. Look at the pros and cons. Know your topic inside out and be able to argue your points. So yeah, in every interview, I always, before interview, will Google like, you know, what's going on in hospital pharmacy, if there's any massive NHS restructuring, like future forward plans and stuff, or just hospital pharmacy in the news in general. You show that you're interested in what's happening, so that will also sell well to your interviewer. Exactly. And if you don't know about it, it makes you look stupid. Whereas if you actually do the research, I'd say don't just read an article and be like, that's it. Look into it. Look into it in deep detail. And lastly, know that there's other resources than the BNF. Be aware of the SPC, the Renal Drug Handbook, Medusa, Martindale, etc. I know the, the community pharmacists don't use most of these resources in community, but they're used in hospital and so they have to be aware of these and mention them in the interview. So the, the senior pharmacist there has really given you a tip. Be aware of all these different sources, become familiar with them. If you're not sure, then just visit one of your friends who works in hospital one day and just say, look, I'm not really sure, can you tell me about the different sources? Show me how to access them. Make use of the people who, even with me, you're allowed to message me and ask me questions. I try and answer as much as I can. Sometimes it gets really busy, but I try my best. So yeah, know that there are different sources and talk about those in interview. Think about how you would say, to look up this piece of information, if I wasn't sure about something, this is where I'd look. Um, That was my video. I know it seems like quite a whistle-stop tour, but those are the main points. I've done it, my friends have done it, this senior pharmacist has done it. You can transition from community to hospital. You just need to put in a little bit of work to do it. And yeah, once you do it, you'll have no regrets because I don't have any regrets. I love learning new stuff every day and I'm really grateful for every opportunity that I get in hospital. So that's about it. Even I, who know know nothing about pharmacy stuff, I think you did a great job of explaining it. Even I understood. Thanks. So I'll see you in the next video. And if you've got any questions, then let me know. That's it. Bye. Bye.